Hello again, everybody. This is Mr. Wes Moore, your instructor for macroeconomics. I want to welcome you to session eight, understanding aggregate demand. So let's get started now and see what we're going to be covering in this session. We'll be covering three things today. First of all, we're going to talk about the consumption income relationship. What is the relationship between what we consume and our income? Very important in economics. Then we want to look at the spending and saving relationship. What is the relationship between those two things? And then finally, we want to talk about how total spending adds up to gross domestic product. We're going to look at a formula there that will come up a lot in uh, your economics courses. So we want to do that. So let's begin then with the consumption income relationship. You remember from a previous session that we talked about aggregate expenditures where we looked at these different parts of the economy and how they all add up to determine the gross domestic product of the nation. Well, aggregate demand is really nothing more than these very same categories. What do they spend? What do they want to buy? What do they uh, need in terms of goods and services in a year. So aggregate demand is consumption spending. Remember we talked about consumption before. That's the household spending. It's plus the investment spending. That has to do with business. Plus government spending. Plus our net exports. That is what aggregate demand is. These four things put together. Well what we want to talk about mostly in our session now is consumption household consumption because it makes up 69 percent of aggregate demand. So we want to look a bit, little bit closer at consumption spending and we want to do that by looking at some portions of it. So let's look at consumption and income. There's a very important relationship that exists between how much we consume and how much we make. So let's ask that question. What is that relationship? What is the relationship between what I consume, what I buy and take in and use, and what I make? And it's very, very simple. It's not hard at all. The relationship between consumption and income is that we spend what we make. We spend what we make. That's the relationship. It's that symbol. Whatever I take in, I tend to spend one way or another. If I make more money, then I tend to spend more. So if I make or earn more, I tend to spend or consume more. That's the relationship between consumption and income. If I make less, then I spend less. So that's a very easy relationship to understand, and that's the consumption-income relationship. But let's take it one step further. Let's look at the spending-saving relationship. We're going to be driving to something here in a moment. We need to know these terms to be able to do that. What is the spending-saving relationship? The spending-saving relationship has to do with how much of every dollar that you earn do you spend. Do you spend all of it? Do you spend 80% of it, 70% of it, whatever? Well, we have terms for this, and those are, number one, marginal propensity to consume the MPC. Let's take a look at the words in this uh, term here and see if we can understand what this means. Marginal just means the next dollar. Of every dollar that you earn, the next dollar, how much are you inclined or in the habit of spending? The marginal propensity means when you get the next dollar, what are you in the habit or what are you inclined to spend? So it's how much of each new dollar earned do you tend to spend versus save. And it's expressed as the number one, if you spend it all, it's one, or less than one, a, a fraction of one, 0 0.9, 0 0.8, 0 0.5. And the opposite of the marginal propensity to consume is the marginal propensity to save, the MPS. So that is how much of every new dollar earned do you tend to save versus spend. So let's look at some examples. If you consume 80 cents of every dollar that you make, then the, your marginal propensity to consume, your MPC, is 0.8. It doesn't have a dollar sign on it. It's just 0.8. And your MPS, or your marginal propensity to save, is 0.2 because they all have to add up. You're either spending it or you're saving it. There's no uh, middle ground there. If you consume 50 cents of every dollar, then your MPC is 0.5. That's how that works. 
and your NPS is 0.5. So they would be equal there. You're saving half a dollar and you're spending half a dollar. Now these terms lead to an important concept in economics and it's called the spending multiplier. The spending multiplier. And this asks the question, how much does an increase in consumption spending produce in the entire economy? So if we as consumers were to increase our spending by a certain amount of dollars, how much does that impact the entire economy as it ripples through the economy? Is it just a one for one swap or is it more than that? Well, it's actually more than that and we call that the spending multiplier, the spending multiplier. All right, so let's look at the spending multiplier. Let me try and explain to you how this works. Let's say that consumers increase spending by $100. We're just going to keep it very simple. Let's say that all the consumers in America, the total increase in spending is $100. Does that only increase the gross domestic product by $100, or is there more? Well, let's see here. So the consumers increase their spending by $100. And then because of the marginal propensity to consume, let's say that it's 0 0.8, then the people who receive that money, when you spend it, somebody receives that money as income, they're going to turn around and they're going to spend 80% of it as well, right? So that means that they would spend another $80 out into the economy. And then those consumers that receive that, they would spend 80% again, 0.8, and that would be $64. And this would go on and on and on. The next layer would be 80% of 64, which would be 51. And you keep going like that until the money runs out. And that is called the spending multiplier. That is how it works. And note that it's based on the marginal propensity to consume, the MPC. The MPC needs to be known before you can determine what the spending multiplier is. And the spending multiplier is also a very important factor in government stimulus plans and we'll talk a little bit about those later on in the course but the spending multiplier is the whole reason that the government tries to spend money when the recession is down they're trying to get it going again we'll see we'll take a look at that and see if that really works or not but it's based on the MPC and the multiple at the end is the multiplier so let me show you here and 0.8 MPC produces a 5 multiplier so if you had increased spending by $100, at 0.8 MPC, you would have a 5 multiplier. You would take that 100 and multiply it by 5. Now there is a formula for this, and that formula is 1 over 1 minus the MPC. And when you do that, you'll get this. So you don't have to go and do 500 different layers of multiplying out the percentages. You can actually do that formula and multiply that by the increase and you'll end up with that amount. So based on that formula, a 0.8 MPC would give you a multiplier of 5. So you take the $100 that you had spent in additional spending, that's the marginal spending, the new spending, and you multiply it by your multiplier, which is 5, and you get 500. A 0.5 MPC gives you a 2 multiplier, so you would only get $200 total effect in the economy if you spent 100. So that is the spending multiplier. Now let's look very quickly here at how total spending adds up to GDP. Now let's go back to the slide we had up before with the different parts of aggregate expenditures or the different components of aggregate demand. Remember we have consumption, investment, government, and net exports. Now, as you go through economics, you're going to see this formula quite a bit when you're talking about aggregate demand and the aggregate demand curve. That's the AD curve. And what you'll see is GDP will equal consumption, which is represented by a C, investment, which is represented by an I, government, which is represented by a G, and net exports, which is X minus M, X being exports, and M being imports. Remember, it's net exports. And so if we import more than we export, that number will be negative. If we export more than we import, it will be positive. So this is the GDP uh, curve for aggregate demand. GDP equals C plus I plus G plus X minus M. That is the aggregate demand 
function or formula. Well, believe it or not, that's it for this session. Didn't take too long. I appreciate your time today. Hope that you've enjoyed it. Have a great week until we talk to you again.